Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos pertaining to cell respiration and photosynthesis. This video will provide some details on the most important steps of photosynthesis, as exhibited on the top of this slide. In the process of photosynthesis, overviewed in another video, water, light, and carbon dioxide are used to produce oxygen gas and glucose, a sugar. While that video provided an overview of the process, there are many, many steps that are involved. You can take an entire college class studying the process of photosynthesis in different types of plants. While that is beyond the scope of this class and this video, there are a few important steps that are worth discussing in more detail. This video will focus on light-dependent reactions, specifically photosystems 1 and 2, as well as the light-independent reactions of photosynthesis. Emphasis will be on the locations of each of these processes, their functions, reactants, and products. The light-dependent reactions are those that, as the name suggests, require light. This process occurs in the thylakoid membrane, as shown in the picture to the right. The thylakoid is a structure within the chloroplast where chlorophyll, the pigment responsible for absorbing the sun's energy, is located. In this process, energy from light and water are used to convert NADP plus and ADP into NADPH and ATP. ATP and NADPH are the molecules that are needed to fuel later steps in photosynthesis. Within the light-dependent reactions, there are two sub-steps that are worth mentioning, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Both of these photosystems are exhibited in the picture to the right. What's confusing is that these photosystems were not named because of their order that they take place, but by the order in which they were discovered by scientists. Photosystem 2 is actually the first to occur, and works by splitting a water molecule into an oxygen gas and protons, used for the production of ATP in an electron transport chain. Photosystem 1 is the second to occur, and works by using light to convert NADP plus into NADPH, a molecule that is used in the next stage of photosynthesis, the light-independent reactions. The light-independent reactions, also referred to as the Calvin cycle, does not require light to function. This process occurs in the stroma, or the liquid portion within chloroplast, that surrounds all of the other structures. In this process, the products of the light-dependent reactions ATP and NADPH are used in conjunction with carbon dioxide gas to produce sugar. These high energy molecules are used to form the chemical bonds between the sugar molecules required for the cell. Since NADPH and ATP are used up in the process, their remnants ADP and NADP plus are left over to be used again so that they can continue to carry on the light dependent reactions. The word photosynthesis, in itself, describes what happens in this biochemical pathway. Light energy, hence the prefix photo, is used to bring together, or synthesize, sugar. While it might be a little much to learn about every single minute stage of this very complex biochemical pathway, it is certainly important to know about some of the most important stages that were described throughout this video and illustrated again on the picture on this slide. That is the end of this video discussing some of the most important stages of photosynthesis. If you are interested in watching any other videos pertaining to cell respiration or photosynthesis or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.